Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today I'm in Frigliana, Spain. I'm at the Costa de Sol. I'm going to be painting this incredible hillside town um, and I'm going to be sipping on some sherry. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so the materials that we're going to be using today is a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. You can get this at any of your local uh, craft stores or you can get it online and you can certainly change the size, but that's the size I'm using for today. Um, you're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll need some paper towels for drying your brushes. Uh, and the brushes I'm using today is a one inch wide bristle brush. I'm also using a quarter inch wide uh, flat synthetic brush. I'm going to be using a number zero round synthetic brush. And I also have a number two pencil for doing my initial sketch. I'm going to be using acrylic paints today and the colors I'm going to be using are, get this in the light here, titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, raw umber, green oxide, fire red, chrome yellow, and Mars black. And of course, as always, you can switch up those colors as you'd like, uh, but those are the ones I'm going to be using. And that's all you're going to need for your materials today. All right, so as always, before we start this painting, if you want to download an image of the painting that I'm going to be creating, it's down, there's a link down below for you to do so. Sometimes that's easier for you to just print out and use as a visual reference as we go along. And keep in mind that this painting is going to be a beginner level paint and sip kind of painting, so it's a little bit um, loose in interpretation and we're just going to have some fun doing it. Um, and for the first step, I'm going to be using my pencil. I'm going to be doing an initial sketch which is going to include the sky, the water, and the land. Um, so I'm going to kind of just visually pick where I want this um, painting to be and it's, I'm going to be using that left, or excuse me, the right hill over here and it's going to be using the top line of the buildings all the way over to, that, to the right cluster over there. So to divide, up, to divide up my painting, I like to give myself a viewfinder and my viewfinder is gonna be my fingers. So I'm gonna be doing something like this. I see that my water line is coming up about a quarter of the way up my canvas. So I'm just going to be drawing myself a horizontal line. If you ever have to measure to make sure it's not crooked, you can use your pencil as your tool to measure your line. And I seem to be pretty, pretty along the same plane here. I know that my, um, my hill that I'm going to be doing is, is going to start a little bit past uh, my halfway point. So if this is my halfway point, maybe a little bit to here, it's down in my water a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of start to mark that out. I do know that it's going to come up just a little bit here. And again, this is just kind of a, a loose little interpretation of what I'm seeing out there. And it'll be definitely modified as I, uh, as I complete the painting. I just brought that up a little bit further here. And then I just need to finish out my land down here. So this is going to be a little bit of an incline in through there. And that's all I'm going to do for the initial sketch. Uh, and once you have this done, we're going to switch to the large brush, the uh, flat bristle brush. So you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so for the first step, I'm going to be painting the sky. Um, this sky, it's very tough to see where the horizon meets the sky right now with this low-lying haze. So I might use a little bit of creative liberty here, express my, cash in my creative license here. I'm going to start with blue and white. I'm also going to be incorporating maybe a little bit of brown into my sky, but I'm going to start up at the top a little bit bluer than I probably want it to be eventually, but this is going to give me some of that 
realistic blue that's sitting at the top of this sky. Not sure if I'm going to incorporate that um, low-lying haze yet, but as I go along here, I'll, I'll make that determination on my own. But right now, I'm just kind of getting in a nice layer of the sky through here. And we've got the sun behind the canvas today, so my canvas might look a little bit dark to you, but that's all right. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to recognize what it is once I get this paint on a little bit here. And I'm getting it to go a little bit lower before, I think I might uh, put some of that hazy cloud in there. So I'm seeing that the sky is coming a little bit lighter before that hazy um, type cloud structure starts. So maybe I'll incorporate just a touch of this rust color in there so when I do put it on, it will uh, show up nice and bright or nice and clear. So this rust in here just kind of added a little bit of um, color to my sky behind what I'm going to put as that low-lying hazy kind of cloud. So what I'm doing now is I'm using white, blue, and a touch of brown to get this um, low-lying haze of a sky on here and again I, I'm, I'm using a good amount of paint so this way I can kind of move it as it's drying here um, I might add, have to add a little bit of white to my palette here not sure if I put enough on there when you're painting outside sometimes these uh, depending on how warm it is out or how much Sun is out sometimes it uh, your canvas will soak up a lot of your paint as you're going along so you might have to reload your palette a couple of times here I would like to get a little bit more definition in through there and now I'm going to add a little bit of brown and blue maybe a touch of black into this lower area before I hit my water um, so this way you can really get the um, the idea of this low-lying haze can you get white out of there for me, please? Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep manipulating this gray as it goes along. I'm going to add a little bit of white on top of it. Just a second here. I'm really enjoying how this sky is coming out. I'm stalling for a minute while my white is arriving here it's not coming quick enough so I might have to pause the camera for a second here but here it comes I'm going out of view for one second yep that's it, that's it. all right this is the joy of uh, painting live on the scene so here we go now I'm just gonna kind of finish up in through here with a little bit more white I'm bringing it all the way down to that horizon line and once I start putting on the other, um, the other objects on the painting, this sky is really going to make sense and it's going to look really nice against the other colors that are um, going to happen on the canvas. But I'm kind of digging this. It's got some of this low-lying haze. I'm just kind of moving this paint as it dries a little bit. Um, and then once I get this step done, I am going to be using this larger brush for the next step, but I'm going to want to wash it and dry it. So I'm just kind of finishing up getting this um, hazy sky on here. I've got the blues. I've got a little bit of the um, a little bit of the rusty color in through there, and then I'm going to be washing and drying this big brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna be using my one inch wide bristle brush. I'm gonna be painting the water. And as I'm looking out at the water, it's pretty similar to the sky. Um, so the way that I'm gonna do it is I'm going to do it a, a, a little bit brighter at the horizon line. I do see a dark line, which I might incorporate a dark line and then lighter uh, in it. So 
but it's going to be similar colors to my sky so i'm using white blue brown and black um, i'm going to start with a little bit of brown blue and white just to kind of give myself a horizon line and then i can then i can adjust it after that so this is just giving myself some something to work with that's going to be a little bit different in color than my sky so that way i can personally see the difference for it um, i don't want it to be too obvious because i do want to um, represent what i'm seeing out there in in some kind of fashion um, so but i do know it's definitely not vibrant blue so i'm going to go with a nice subtle tone in through here and i'm going to bring it all the way to my um to my land so now i'm just kind of picking up white in through here to get it uh, i didn't wash my brush i'm just getting this to to blend in with it make it look like it belongs together maybe i'll go lightly over this to give it some kind of haze and not have a super vibrant um, horizon line because there is not a vibrant horizon line so this way I can just dull it down by adding a little bit of my light white mixture and just kind of lightly going over that horizon line again just so it blends in a little bit and so it resembles what I'm seeing out there a little bit more um, and then I'm going to go into the water area down here and I'm going to um, make it a little bit like more muted as it comes down towards the bottom so I'm going to be using a little bit brown uh, black and white and this way it's going to resemble that sky more um, because the water is typically going to be a reflection of that sky um, so you want to whatever tones and shades and um, various warmths and coolnesses that you're using in your sky you should emulate in your water as well because they're they're part of the same you know atmospheric um, composition so that way they'll look like they belong together so you don't want to go and changing your colors too much when you're going to, to the water um, but i still want you to be able to recognize that there is two separate entities here one is going to be your sky and one is going to be your water so that's why i'm just kind of tweaking this before i before i say i'm done um, i do want to make sure that you can see the difference between the two um, even if i have little bits of you know pieces of lights or darks in my water just so we can get them to look like they belong together and i'm pretty happy with that because i can visually see the difference between my water and my sky and they are complementing each other with the tones that i've set between them um, and i am going to be using this bigger um, bristle brush for the next step so once you get done with this you can wash and dry that bristle brush and get ready for the next step all right so what i'm going to be doing for the next step is I'm going to be putting my first layer on the land. So this is going to be my hill, and it's going to be um, it's going to be the hill over here. I'm going to preserve a little bit of room in through here for a base coat on my little town, and a little bit of area over here that I'm not going to put paint for a base coat for that the little buildings in through here. So the predominant colors that I'm going to be using are black, brown. Uh, burnt sienna, green, and perhaps some yellow. So the, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dotting it. So I'm going to start with some brown and green just so I can in essence get this um, texture on here and get a good uh, idea of where I want these hills to be placed and if there's any um, visual outlines that I want to that I want to create now is the time where I can just lay them into place by using multiple colors what I'm doing is I'm creating right off the bat I'm creating um, 
dimension in it. If I continue to just kind of change colors on my brush, like I'm doing right now, I'm using the dark colors where I see the dark areas, and I'll be using the lighter colors when I see the lighter areas. By doing this right off the bat, it's gonna help me to um, create dimension in these hills. This is gonna be almost right behind the little city that I'm gonna put in a, in a bit, so I want it to be on the darker side. I don't wash my brush through this process. I just am doing this dotting technique, um, and I will be switching colors as I go, but I don't um, wash my brush, and this way uh, it allows me to get a natural transition from one color to the next. So I'm gonna to start to use a little bit of this rust and green at this point to get some nice vibrancy over on this side where the sun is starting to really show its beautiful colors here. So again, rust and green is kind of what I'm using right now. I'm switching to a little bit of green and brown to get a, little, a deeper tone in through here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of dotting what, I, what I'm seeing in front of me. If I've got lighter areas, I can incorporate the lighter colors. I see that there's a almost kind of a, a crest right in through here. So I'm gonna start incorporating a little bit of yellow. And if you needed to, you can certainly add some white into this to get it to be a little bit softer in tone. Um, that would, that definitely allows you to get those soft, a softer look to it. Um, I wanna incorporate a little bit of this yellow up in through here. And I think I am gonna to touch my brush into the white just to get um, a little bit more dimension up into this hill in through here and on this crest line. I've got one there. I think I want another one in through here. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on the detail of this um, because I know later I can come back and do any little touch-ups, especially as this sun is beginning to um, change the colors that I'm seeing. Um, but I'm getting a nice good coverage on this first pass. And I like to um, add these little peaks of silhouettes going along the, the long the edge here. This allows that more natural look to it. And then I am gonna come right over to um, this section over here and the bottom of my canvas. These I'm not really concerned about getting too much detail in it um, because I'm gonna have my city that's gonna take up the majority of the place. So I'm gonna be using a lot of green and black and just kind of filling in some of the area down here. I'm using a good amount of paint on my brush because I don't need much detail down here. This again is just filling in the space that's gonna allow for um, my city to kind of have a place to rest. Oops, I got some red in my brush there, but that's all right. Um, this is gonna have this little uh, city in through there, or the little couple of little buildings and there's a whole bunch of, uh, there's a little road and stuff that we can pop in later. But again, this is just kind of occupying the space and giving me um, a nice place to put these buildings in a minute. I'm gonna be using a little bit of black to just darken this up here. And again, I'm preserving this little spot at the top of this hill for those buildings that I see off in the distance. I've got some black on my brush now. And again, this is just that low line. It's almost like a little silhouette at this point with the way that the sun is hitting. And I wanna make sure that I've got enough in through here so when I go to put those buildings on top, I don't have to worry about um, any spaces in between. And that's gonna pretty much do it for me on this, on this step. Um, for the next step, I'm gonna be using, uh, actually, I'm gonna use my big brush for the next step. So when you're done with this, you can wash and dry that flat, uh, the bristle brush and get ready for the next step. So for the next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm using my bristle brush. I'm gonna be blocking in the base coat for my building areas. 
So I know that later I'm going to be putting in little rooftops and highlights and shadows and windows. So I want to go for a base coat. And for me, a base coat here is going to be like a creamy brown, um, tannish beige kind of color. So the three colors that I'm going to be using are white, black, and brown. I'm going to be using mostly white on my brush and a little bit of brown to start. I'll incorporate the black in a minute. Um, I do want to have some kind of similar um, shape to this. So I know that it's small and narrow down in through here. And what I'm going to be doing is every um, so often, I'm going to be almost making these sharp or clean edges to the top of, these, um, of this structure. The bottom is not as important because you're going to be coming through and putting some of the, this greenery uh, to meet it, or you've already got the greenery, so you could just dot the bottom to meet um, those tr that tree line. But the top, because it's buildings, you definitely want to um, have some pointy parts, some straight parts. Um, I do know that as I'm looking out there, it goes up a little bit towards this left-hand side and then it drops back down. So I'm going to just kind of bring some of these up a little bit. I'm going to start to incorporate a little bit of black just so I have diversity in the colors that I'm using. And so, um, again, I'm util utilizing the corner of my brush to just get some straight pieces in there. You could use a, a smaller or a flatter brush to do this. Um, the body of this color doesn't matter because we're going to be adding um, all of the information about the buildings in a couple of minutes. But the, the biggest part here is just to kind of get yourself um, some straight marks or more sharp marks at the top. And then you're just filling the rest of it in with a, uh, with a variety of gray and cream color. I don't like to use a solid color because I'm not seeing a solid color out there. I'm seeing a variety of these shades. So by not pre-mixing your color, this is going to give you some natural shadows throughout this area without even really trying to put them in there. Um, and this is going to help you when you go to create the buildings on a future step. So because I have these light spots and these dark spots, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a much easier time creating those buildings with the uh, bright spots and the, and the dark spots. But I am just dotting it as I get towards these trees so that way it looks like it's naturally um, coming together with them as well. And I also have this little section over to the right that I'm going to do as well. So I'm going to use the same process. I'm using white and brown to kind of start the, start the party here. Um, and then again, I'm just kind of trying to emulate, you know, some similar profile to it that I see. If you don't get it perfect, no worries. And I'm trying to get a couple of clean edges off on um, the top side of it. And then as I go down towards the, uh, the base of it, that's when I'm gonna start to dot it so it works its way into the tree line that's down below. And then for the next step, I'm going to be using my, um, small pointy brush so after you get done with this you can put your your bristle brush in your water cup and you can take out that small pointy brush for the next step and get ready for it all right so what I'm doing for the next step just to uh, keep the authenticity of this painting is I'm going to be doing there's a little road that happens in between the two banks of buildings so I'm going to be using my small brush. Um, it looks like there might be a little parking lot up there. So I'm going to be using black, white, and brown to just kind of put some form of pavement up and through here. And again, I'm not doing going full on into 
extraordinary detail, but this is something that, again, is going to provide some authenticity to this. Um, I see that it kind of swoops around like this. Um, there's all kinds of windy roads up here in this beautiful mountain area, so this is going to give people the the feel of exactly where it is and I'm just going to kind of trail it off into these these hills here and then if you want to get fancy and start um, incorporating there's like a little tower in through here and then maybe there's a couple of little building tops and again stuff like this not terribly needed but if you want to get it to really feel like the real place you can certainly incorporate as much as you want in through here um, and I'm gonna be using my not really going much into detail here I just wanted to kind of get that road in through there the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using the medium paintbrush that that flat uh, paintbrush that you have here uh, so when you're done getting some little detail in through there, you can put your small brush away in your water cup and get the flat brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm doing with the next step, I'm going to be using this flat brush. I'm putting a, my second pass on the buildings. So this is going to be um, providing me with more distinct shape. I'm going to be putting rooftops on and I'm going to be putting... Um, some definition into like the blocks of color so what I'm gonna be doing um, is I'm gonna be using a combination of the brown black white the rust is gonna be used for rooftops but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with white and I'm gonna start to just kind of make almost like a series of um, squares and rectangles in you know in a variety of different areas um, I can see that it's a little bit brighter over on this left side just based on where the Sun is so maybe at some points I do you know like a little triangle top this is not going to be uh, again very in detail but I definitely just want to get some lighter spots I'm now going into black brown and white and I'm going to start to just kind of make myself a variety of different shapes of the block nature you can almost just kind of get them in there without adding too much detail I don't want to add too much detail because once I do some um, of the windows and I get some oops get some rooftops on there that's really gonna make all the difference in the world so right now I'm just kind of um, working on getting some shapes that I can identify as certain buildings perhaps um, but again I'm not going super in detail I keep putting my brush in the yellow when I don't want to put my brush in the yellow but that's all right so I'm watching my um, my cityscape but I'm just for inspiration I'm not um, attempting to get it exactly as it is I'm really just want to get the essence of this so I can have some varying shades of color in through here um, and I'm you can see I'm I'm kind of free forming at this point so I can get the essence of it without having to go full on into extreme detail here um, what, and again once I put those rooftops on that's gonna really make a tremendous amount of difference um, but right now I'm just kind of getting some basic direction going on for uh, for the different structures here and I'm going to also do this for the small buildings that are going to be over to that right hand side and you can see as I as I start going along here my brush starts to move faster because I'm I'm kind of getting into it a little bit more here um, I am going to go and do this this uh, particular stage of it over into these buildings now so again I'm using brown 
black and, and white and I'm just kind of marking this up with some various little sections here that I can maybe identify as buildings. Um, I do want some lighter areas which is why I'm incorporating some white. I know that there's sunshine starting to really poke through over here so I'm going to get some real bright spots in through there maybe over here and again I'm going to start to add some rooftops as well so the rooftops are going to be that rust color um, and maybe some black and stuff like that but my roofs I really are going to start to identify and help you to form the these buildings so you can do a variety of you know ones from an angle you can use your your multiple colors on your brush to get you know a full-on full roof in through there um, these are really far off in the distance so I don't need them to be big I don't need them to be detailed I can really just give you the essence of it I do see a couple of really dark ones too so maybe maybe that's where I add a little black one here you know and then again I'm not going full on I'm just kind of making sure I've got something that resembles more of a town as opposed to um, a rock so in order to get that illusion I definitely need some horizontal or some unnatural angles so that's where these um, these rooftops are going to come into place and now I'm just kind of adding some some more vertical lines arbitrarily and that's going to give you the more more of an illusion of the the buildings themselves I'll do the same thing over here I've got some some rooftops maybe I've got this rusty color spattered in here for a few areas and again just I want to give you the the illusion that there that it's a whole bunch of buildings um, I'm going to after I get a good representation here of these uh, rooftops I am going to switch brushes to my small brush because I do want um, to be able to do windows and I've got some a couple of little trees and stuff in through there that I'll be able to identify with my um, with my small brush so I'm just kind of adding a last couple in through here I think I'm going to incorporate a little bit of that uh, yellow to get some sunshine over on some of these I didn't want to do too much yellow but I do really want you to feel like there's sunshine over here so that's where I'm going to add a little bit because I'm expressing my creative license right now <laughs> it really helps to elevate that brightness a little bit and again this is more of have fun enjoy the experience I've got some bright stuff up here that I want to kind of get on maybe a couple more little rooftops and again I'm gonna switch brushes in a second here once I'm happy with as much detail as I've got on here all right so I'm pretty good with that so I'm gonna take my uh, flat brush put it in my water cup I'll take out that small brush and get ready for the next step all right so for the next step I'm gonna be adding any little greenery that I see dispersed throughout the city and I'm going to do any little final touches I want on these hilltops so I'm going to use my small brush I'm probably going to primarily use black my two browns green and white um, so right now I just dipped my brush in black and green and I'm going to come in through these hills in through here and just add some little detail to make you see that there is in fact um, some little trees sticking up and again this is something that just adds that little extra um, piece of 
you, you know, realism into it. It doesn't have to be totally real, but if you want to give the illusion that there's, you know, more life up there and that you've really taken this paint into a special place, you can add these little details up at the top. Um, you could add some more going in through here if you wanted to. Um, and now I'm seeing inside my, my cities here, or my little town, that I've got various trees kind of popping up in through here. So in order to give you, the viewer, the idea that they're trees, I'm going to be adding green, um, definitely green. If you can't see it in front of like your backdrop, you can certainly add a little bit of white to it up at the top. Um, but I'm going to have some fun here because I see a whole whole bunch of um, little areas where there's gardens popping up throughout that throughout that town. This is where I'm going to finish up down at the bottom here too to make sure that it is well um, ble not blended but connects well to the um, to the city itself. I'm going to pop in a whole bunch of little trees in through here, you know, or wherever you want to, wherever you can see them off in the distance. But I, I know that I see quite a few of them. They're almost like tall cypress trees that are popping up in through there. If you want there to look like there's a little road perhaps going up in through the city, you can do something like this. I, I kind of see one down at the end. Um, I do see a couple of little trees popping their heads up over here. So this is where my green and black are really going to help out and I'm going to finish up this little tree line in through here. Um, and this is a step that you could really have a lot of fun with and just filling in some of these areas to make them really look like somebody's got a beautiful garden just interspersed. You could add lovely colors to it as if there's flowers in through there. Um, but again, you can, you can improv as much as you want and just fill this in, make it feel like it's a real village just nestled in this beautiful mountainside. Um, just make sure that you fill in all the gaps and that you've got a good representation of, of what you're seeing and what you're feeling over there. Um, and then we are gonna be using this, there's a big truck going by right now. <laughs> Um, so we are going to be using this small brush for the next step, but I do want to just kind of tidy this up here a little bit. I'm going to be doing this um, greenery on that other little piece of land as well. So just give me a, a second here to get all this in through here. I think I'm going to add a couple of little areas in through here just to make sure it's represented well and it looks like it belongs that it's just nestled right in behind a whole bunch of trees. Um, the next step's gonna be really fun because it's we're almost at the last step and the next one is getting the, um, the windows and stuff onto these buildings. So that again, just helps to elevate it, that one, one more step into making it look nice and realistic. And of course, as you go down this road, if you want to add any little highlights on these trees down here and again this is something that the the more little details you can add the the more realistic it's going to look um, but we're just kind of going for a nice simplistic representation here which is makes it lots of fun um, and there's no pressure to make it look exactly like a photo so we're just adding some little gardens in through here. Perfect. All right. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to use this small brush for the next step, but I do want to wash it and dry it. So after you get all your little trees in there um, and you're, you're happy with that step on it, you can wash and dry that small step or the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So for the next step, I'm going to be adding the little windows and doors or just I don't think I can really see a door out there my vision's not that good but I'm gonna be using my small brush I'm gonna be using black paint uh, one of my tricks to getting a nice um, fluid 
paint is I just added a little bit of water to it and just spun it around. Uh, that way as I go along my brush will stay wet longer. Um, and I could certainly sit out there and count the number of windows but that's not the type of painting I'm doing right now. So I'm just really going to pick something that to me resembles like a building and I'm just going to kind of add these little marks that we're going to call windows. You can do rows of them. You could do a little door if you wanted to with little windows next to it. And I'm just going to go throughout the whole thing and just kind of add almost um, systematic kind of windows. If you put them in a row, they're going to look definitely more like windows than if you just put a series of dots like that. Um, so if you do something that you don't like, you, oops, I just put black in my sky. If you do something that you don't like, you can always go back over it, you know, give it another color, let it dry for a minute, and then you can certainly just add, go back and add those, um, those marks to it. You can do horizontal windows if you wanted to. Um, you can put them at an angle so that looks like they're going far away from you. If you put them at an angle, you've got to make them kind of smaller as they go away from you, but they have to be horizontal so or vertical. So I've got a vertical line and then they just get smaller as they go away. That's going to make it look like it's going at, um, that it's got some um, angle to it. So like this, I can just make smaller as they go away and that's going to tell the viewer that they are getting farther away and they're going at, at a distance here. So that again just gives the illusion you can put some vertical and horizontal lines kind of sporadically throughout it and that's also going to give you lead the viewer to understand that these are buildings. So I could just arbitrarily do some vertical and horizontal lines throughout this to make it look like windows or sides of buildings. Um, the, the sequential dots are going to definitely allude to windows. Um, but again, if you don't want to sit here and make 90,000 dots for the windows, you can just make yourself some vertical and horizontal lines to tell the viewer that these in fact are buildings. Um, and if you need to, you can add more white anywhere. You can, you know, these don't have to be just white. They could be gray dots and gray lines. Um, so again, that's, you can have some fun. I'm gonna go over to that right side here in a minute, right here. And again, I'm just kind of adding a series of dots to lead the viewer to understand that these are in fact buildings. And I'm not going to go too much more than that. Um, I will get rid of that dot in the sky after the camera is off. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of happy with this. I, I'm going to just add a couple more little lines here. Maybe step back for a second and observe, see if maybe I want some lightness on some of these building profiles. But again, just adding a little bit more contrast and color sometimes will help to uh, enhance your illusion that you're trying to emulate. Uh, if you can't see your, your, um, the tops of your buildings as much, maybe you just add a little bit of highlight onto them. Um, but that, I think, is going to do it. Let me just brighten this road a little bit. It's so hard to stop. One of these days I'll learn that, um, that trait of being able to stop at the good enough stage. Um, but right now I like this, so I think I'm going to call it. Um, there is one final step with, to any good painting. Uh, it's going to be with the tiny brush. So when you get your buildings to the way that you like them, what you can do is just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for that last tiny step. All right, so the last final step of any painting is to sign it. 
So I'm going to be using my small round brush. I'm going to be using white to sign it. Um, you can sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right, whichever works for you. I am going to be signing this in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, you can use your initials, you can use your first name, you can use the date. Uh, whatever works for you is fine by me because this is your ad identifying mark. Um, so you can make it your own. So that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.